All right, everyone. So here is the first video on watercolor techniques. And we're gonna cover three techniques today. But before we do the techniques, let's go over the supplies you'll need. So you'll want, first off, a container of clean water. Don't have to fill it all the way. Actually, you don't want it all the way full. Just want it like part of the way full. Uh, a couple of brushes, those should be in your kits. You should have at least a small and a large. Uh, each Everyone got a slightly different brush, but I tried to give everyone a small and a large brush. And then you'll need your watercolor kit, which yours looks different than mine. You guys have the one with eight pans. Mine has more, um, but it's the exact same paint. It's the same brand. I just ran out of the smaller ones and I didn't have one for myself, so I took the larger one, um, you know, an older one. And then the last thing that you will definitely need is a paper towel or a couple paper towels to uh, both um, for cleaning and also for some of the techniques. All right, so the first thing that you wanna do before anything else is make sure that your tray is clean. Your um, This would be the uh, inside of the cover, the clear cover of your watercolor kits. Make sure that any old watercolor gets scrubbed out. So what you do is dip dip a corner of your paper towel in the water and just clean the inside of your tray. Make sure you get all the old paint wiped out. Okay, that's the first, first thing to do is make sure that that's clean and ready for mixing. All right, so we're gonna move on to the first technique, which is mixing colors. So, clean brush, clean water. You want to get the brush wet and then activate the pans that you want to use for, um, for your color. So, um, if I want to make, let's say I want to make an orange that's different than the orange that's in the kit. So, I would get some yellow and then paint it out into the tray, clean my brush, and then get a little bit of the red that I want to use. And then I usually mix in, I don't mix right in the middle, I mix off to the side, I put the two colors off to the side and then start to blend them together so that I can control the quantity. And if I don't have enough of the lesser color, meaning the yellow, or I don't have enough of the dominant color, I'm gonna clean my brush and then go back and, and take some more. Also, you have to think about quantity when you're mixing. If you're doing a large area, you wanna make sure that you have enough of the paint to get through the area that you wanna get through. So sometimes you have to go back and get more paint in order to get the right quantity. So it depends on, you might get the right mixture, but maybe you don't have enough of the paint and then you have to stop midway through and mix more. All right, so that's mixing. Okay, second technique is just called flat wash. And flat wash is just a fancy way of saying that you're gonna paint an area. So this is just where you're gonna use a color and you're gonna paint an area with a flat wash. So um, I have an idea for the circular parts of my design the scissors and the tape. I want to use a um, warm color on the negative space of the inside of the scissors, and I'm gonna use a cool color on the positive space of the objects. I'm gonna see if I can create some, some contrast there. So I'm just gonna do just a flat wash, and this is nice and even, and you wanna make sure your, paint, your uh, paper's pretty uh, like level on the table, otherwise the watercolor may pool in the lower areas. So get your get your paper level on the table so that the water can just sit and create a very even um, very even coverage. You can see that mine is not. The sketchbook that I'm using has a binding at one end, which is making it lift off the page a little bit. So what I'm gonna to try to do is just, I'm gonna to try to use the brush. I'm gonna blot the brush on this paper towel, and I'm gonna to try to use the brush to 
kind of absorb some of that extra some of that extra color so we can get it to be even. All right, that's not too bad. Next technique is going to be a gradient. This is a one color gradient, so you're going to fade a color from more intense to less intense using more water as you go. Uh, tomorrow, in the next video, uh, we're going to do a two color gradient, but this is going to be just a one color gradient. So you need a clean brush and any color you want, and it doesn't have to be a mixture. You could use one straight from the pan. So I'm just going to do this green. And what I'm trying to do is build up a bunch of color so that it's pretty saturated. And then what I'm going to do is as I paint the area, I'm going to hold the brush a little bit sideways. And then I'm going to also add some water to the mixture as I go. So I'm going to start with the darkest part or the most saturated part. And maybe I wanted the small brush here, but it's okay. And I'm going to paint just part of this. And then as I get about halfway down, I'm going to rinse the brush out and then take some of that water and then just kind of like add it into the mixture at the bottom. And then I'm going to just continue to paint. And now the color is going to start to fade. And then the last part, I'm going to take all the color out of the brush and it's just going to be water. So I'm kind of, right now I'm just kind of pushing water around with the brush at the bottom of the gradient like that. And I can kind of amplify the top of that and go back to my original color which is almost already dry. I'm going to add a little bit more. And I'm just being really gentle here, just using the very, very tips of the brush. I'm not really doing too much. I'm not pushing down too hard or, um, you know, applying a lot of pressure. All right, the last technique we're going to cover today is called lifting and blotting. So lifting and blotting is where you apply color and then you remove some of that color and you're gonna need both brushes for this. So you're gonna need your big brush and your small brush uh, for this part. So I use the blue. So nice and dark, pretty, pretty well saturated, and I'm just going to paint this entire section blue. All right, so now I've got a solid blue color. Then, while the paint is still wet, I'm going to take the smaller brush, get it wet, some clean water, and then I'm going to, this is called lifting, where you take the brush and you kind of start to paint in those wet areas, and then I'll blot on the paper towel once the brush is kind of soaked up. And this is usually used to create sort of like cloud effects um, or highlights on objects that are, um, you know, round or have like a diffused surface. All right, so you can start to see that it starts to lighten up a little bit. So that's the lifting part with the brush. And then the last part is you take uh, a paper towel that's cleaner than this one. But let's see, i got to find a good side. All right, here we go. And then just gently, just very carefully, you're going to blot in those areas where you lifted. And it'll just kind of pick up the last of the water that you did with the lifting brush. And that'll kind of add the final touches to that to that um, effect. So then you get a really cool like kind of tie-dye modeled effect. Um, or you, you know, you can get lots of different effects depending on how you use the brush. All right, so that is part one 
of watercolor and we're going to do, so we did four techniques today and we're going to do four more tomorrow.